So if you're out on a hike somewhere and you're turning over rocks and you find uh, some small brown worm uh, on the rock, if you look and you see these two little crossed eyes, uh, that's a planarian. Uh, so uh, they, I think they're kind of cute, actually. They, they're, they're flat, uh, they're small, but they're, they kind of have some personality. My name is Peter Radin. I'm a member of the Whitehead Institute, associate member of the Broad Institute, and an associate professor of biology at MIT. I became interested in planarians while I was a graduate student. So these animals have a complex internal anatomy with brain and intestine and musculature, and you amputate off any part of that, and it comes back through regeneration. And I was working with a model system studying problems in developmental biology, and I realized that as a community, there were large important problems that were little studied. Part of the uh, issue I came to believe was that we needed additional model organisms. Uh, numerous genes control important developmental events, biological events, in a common way across many animals, including planarians, flies, worms, mice, and humans. And that's because the processes that uh, are commonly investigated with model organisms appeared long ago in evolution. And in fact, what we see is most of the genes that we study that are important for regeneration in planarians have counterparts in the human genome. Since planarians can regrow any missing part of their body, there must be some source for the new material. Where is all the new material coming from in an adult animal? Normally, you think of new cells being made during development in an embryo from the embryonic cells that have not yet specialized to perform their, uh, their specific uh, tasks. But in an adult, you have development has stopped. In a sense, you have uh, neurons and muscles and uh, epidermis. So if those cells are specialized, what are the cells that are making everything anew once you amputate off part of the body? It's quite fascinating that you can cut the animal anywhere you want, removing any part of the body. And at those wound sites, some molecular process must occur to make a decision. Instructions must be sent to specify what new cells are made. How do they know? How do they figure it out? So there must be some molecular process happening at wounds to specify these regeneration programs. And we're very interested in trying to understand how that works.